Uh, but like you said, I think uh, it's got a lot to do with, uh, you know, not just us people who are working in the field, but also a lot of change has to come in at a policy level uh, so that the research can continue, uh, like you said, without any, um, you know, hindrance to the funding. Uh, let, since we are talking about this, let, let, let's go into the relevant topic here. This is a part of the question that I wanted to raise. Uh, COVID-19, the current situation that we are in, we are all talking about, one, the virus and the infection and the spread and the severity and mortality. But the second aspect of it and the biggest challenge, I think, is about containment. Are we able to trace, identify, contain, screen all of these aspects and how far we are able to do that? So that's where I think we need to talk about the public health aspect of it, uh, Dr. Padma. I'll come to epidemiology a little later, but since we are continuing it from the conversation from the infectious disease aspect of uh, COVID, can you throw some light? You've been uh, in this field and you've been working in the area of public health. Uh, I don't want to ask this question. Uh, I'm sure the answer is yes. We surely have a lot of gaps, but what do you have to say? Well, I think, uh, you know, so, so far, um, uh, you know, and there are two uh, different uh, thoughts. Uh, I'm just writing a public uh, policy piece for a uh, for a East Asia Forum uh, journal, um, and uh, in, in my article, I've uh, noted a few points. One of the points is that India is uh, a home to uh, you know 17 to 18 percent of the world's population, which is about 1.35 billion population. And if you look at the number of COVID cases, it's a, it's crossed 200,000. And India has just got 135. It's like 0.06% of cases. Reported cases, let's say. Reported cases, yes, that's right. So, you know, um, it's it's interesting that, you know, you could argue two ways. One is you can say that India is, uh, you know, catering to 20% of the world's population, but it's got less than 1% of the cases. It could be that it's it's done a fabulous job in reporting, or it could be that there's there are some gaps. Now let let's look at the let's look at the first first part. You know, India was the first country to jump in to implement a lot of uh, uh, screening measures in airports. Uh, even in January, they started doing it, and they were consistently, uh, you know, uh, able to spread that screening to several airports and now it's come to a point that they are not letting any visitors come from certain countries like Afghanistan, Philippines and Malaysia. Even Indian citizens can't come inside the, from these countries. So I think they have screened more than 150, 200,000 passengers incoming from uh, into the country and they have done a very good job in that. But in terms of reported cases, it's a very uh, strange uh, double-edged sword because double-edged sword because the cases are reported only from the government centers. And if anybody knows India, they would know that the private health sector caters to nearly eighty-five to ninety percent of healthcare in the country. Yeah. So they are the first point of contact, and people actually go to private sector for any uh, healthcare-related uh, problems, and uh, all the testing. At this stage, uh, while we are talking, are only being done in government centers. Yeah. So the reporting is only coming from the government centers, and you, and you can, and you can rightly argue that you know it could be, be more than 300, 400 cases, but we don't know yet. Yeah. So the data as such points to uh, 100 plus 134 cases, and they are actually coming from go only government centers, and uh, governments done uh, so far has done a good job in uh, reducing the flow of uh passengers who might have carried covid 19 into the country sure. the next biggest challenge is going to be the community transmission where it's going yeah. to happen within the community and for that there are several uh issues and uh, and it relates to what the public health gaps uh, we have one is the number of test kits which are going to be uh, available yeah. and even though india has got a robust market uh, there are only two or three approved companies which can uh, supply these kits. And one is Roche, another is a South Korean company. And these are the two companies which can, uh, which are authorized to supply these kits. And uh, it's the capability of the government to um, procure this kit to, for testing at a wider level. And you can see that South Korea 
has done a fabulous job yes. in testing everybody and they have uh, in fact controlled um the epidemic even uh, when italy and france and there's a beautiful graph you can all go see on internet italy france and south korea all started the epidemic at the same time but you can see italy and france are shot up really high and south yeah. korea has done yeah. really yeah. well in containing it and that's a very good example yeah. now that actually points to their ability to test everybody now are we able to do that test anybody uh, for everybody in india yeah. that's a big question mark and that points to several questions and one first uh, factor is whether we have enough test kits and the second is what if we test everybody and what will happen next do we have enough beds to put in put them in isolation or in infect in fever clinics mm. and that's the second question and if you see the public private uh, split up and you could rightly say that 80% of the healthcare the hospital beds are with private sector that goes without saying so they have a big uh, uh, setup in india so our governments doing enough to uh, engage in private sector and that's also another question and the third thing is do we have enough healthcare workers to tackle this yeah definitely uh, you know india is below the who level of healthcare workers per thousand population and that is uh, something the government will have to deal with it so you can see that all of this are linked to each other and these are all pointing uh you know uh very stark public health gaps in how we can manage covid-19 situation in the coming weeks so uh, it's just not social distancing and personal hygiene it will also boil down to how are we going to manage testing for people who are going to uh, present themselves with symptoms in the next 2 to 3 weeks yeah and i think more importantly in addition to that how are we going to handle those who are not going to present themselves exactly you know, a lot of these if we look at the expand, exponential growth uh, that we've seen both with china not just with china china and then with spain and then with uh, now in the united states as well the way it's multiplying if you see the trend uh, i think we are at that tipping point we've seen one tipping point in india uh, a week ago but a week ahead of us also looks tricky um what are we going to do about those Uh, people who are not going to present any symptoms but are still going to be carrying like you rightly said korea probably succeeded by testing everybody but in a country like india and for that matter in many other countries for example africa we're not seeing many cases being reported again i use the word reported because we do not know how far the transmission uh, has gone is everybody being tested now last night when uh, dr tedros was addressing uh, from who he's exactly pointed this out that you know maybe we are not testing enough so these are all the public health gaps we do see across the globe not just in india but the uh, point of interest that i want to bring everybody back into the conversation and not just get dragged into covid is uh, we are talking about infectious diseases we are talking about the specialists who need to be trained to work in these areas not just in the containment of the hospitals but out in the community then there is the greater concept of public health but these are the concepts which probably we need to talk discuss and probably focus more on rather than one infection or disease of course it becomes a point of conversation today but we should uh, be prepared enough to handle many more such things which are going to come not just the current situation but there could be many other situations arising like they have been in the past are we preparing ourselves enough you mentioned the right point dr patma one of the biggest challenges is do we have enough trained healthcare workforce we see a lot of uh, audience today are nurses who are front end healthcare workers who are touching and handling every patient uh, apart from the doctors so how many of our nursing communities are equipped enough in terms of skills and training to handle such situations both within the containment of the healthcare ecosystem and even out in the community uh, a lot of awareness and training also needs to be put into these uh, sectors as well apart from the clinicians we are talking about